I was visiting a friend and in her guest bedroom was a gorgeous mirror framed with fused glass. I didn't take a picture of it. It's not my work. Don't want to copy the artist, but I do want to make something similar. So I did a quick sketch in my book. It was rectangular. The mirror that she had was approximately two feet by one and a half feet, way too large. I don't have a kiln big enough to do something like that. I'm not going to buy a kiln big enough to do something like that. So I am scaling it down in my head. It was clear glass and the components that seemed to hold it together and decorate it were mostly made out of transparent glass. They were water jet cuts and hand cut pieces. I really prefer working with freeze and fuse. Not that good at cutting sea creatures by hand and water jet, jet cuts are just too expensive for me to buy enough of them to do a piece like this. So today I'm back to my tub of powdered glass samples and my silicone molds and I'm going to make freeze and fuse components for a prototype of that beautiful mirror I saw. I'm going to go through my molds and I'm going to, going to find big, sturdy pieces to decorate the mirror. I want this to be relatively quick, relatively easy, and just give me a feel for how one would put a frame like that together. So first step is to avoid anything that is extremely frail. This one looks like it might be, but it's not. I've used it before and it actually turns out really well. These are all deep and large enough. They will work well. This, these bits of seaweed, they end up much too frail. I would be fighting with them. The fish are iffy. This one works out pretty well because it's thick and deep enough. This one, while it does work out if you're super careful, this part by the tail is a little bit too thin. So I think I'm going to stick with the larger fish, the deeper fish on this mold. This one is probably too large overall, but this seaweed I will make and then maybe break off sections to use to decorate the frame. And here's another one. I won't use these big pieces, which are way too large, but the seaweed will work and maybe the octopus that might be fun to put on the frame. So that's my first step, deciding which molds I'm going to use and to start getting these ready to go into the freezer. When I do the final piece, the, the mirror frame, which will be much larger, I can use some of these larger pieces, but I don't think this is going to fit on the prototype. In order to get it in the smaller kiln, I'm going to make either a five by seven or a four by six frame. And a lot of these pieces are just gonna to be too large, even though I think they would work out great. And I may make an octopus just for fun, see how it comes out, but I don't know that that's gonna fit on the frame. I'm thinking the frame is going to be for a four by, four by six picture and no more than an inch wide, possibly an inch and a half, which means the tentacles are gonna be hanging over the edge. So I probably won't use that for this piece. I will definitely use this seaweed because I can break off branches, make them work. That one. I don't think I'll deal with this one this time, but I may change my mind because I like that fish. I don't know that I will deal with those this time or I will use those this time. The smaller of these shells will definitely work. Seaweed will work. Smaller sand dollars will definitely work. So I think I will be using these. So next step, pick my colors and get these ready to go in the freezer. The frame will eventually include fret and stringers, but for now, the freeze and fuse components, I'm going to use powder. In order to do freeze and fuse, as I've said a handful of times, I'm going to start out with a water and an eyedropper. I use popsicle sticks and a spoon that I've bent 
to make it a really nice scoop. And these little decorator, these were when you uh, would travel back in the day. You could buy souvenir spoons to hang them on a little rack. They're usually base metal, occasionally silver plated. Sometimes you find them that are sterling, so I wouldn't recommend doing this with a silver spoon. But certainly when you, one of these plated base metal spoons is fine. And you can often find them in uh, thrift stores, very cheap, because I don't know that there's anybody who collects souvenir spoons anymore. So they're readily available. It's also something where you need to have a mask. You absolutely do not want to breathe in powdered glass. And I recommend this type. Um, it's a, a P100. You actually don't want the, the relatively cheap masks that are readily available. You definitely need something that's going to work. It's task specific. I think they used to call them HEPA masks or HEPA filters, but now when you look for them at Home Depot or Lowe's, they're P100s. They are vented, but there's a little filter in there that will allow air in, making it a little bit easier to breathe, but it will not allow the powdered glass in. And it has this part, this foamy, so that it actually holds it extremely tight to your face. The problem with a lot of masks is they're not actually form-fitting. And so things can slip in. And glass powder is not one of those things you want to slip in. You want zero glass powder in your lungs. So I recommend this type. Not necessarily that brand, but this type, P100. I'm going to go he through here and decide on colors. To start, I'm going to be making shells and seaweed. So light bronze, plant transparent. And then Kelly green, transparent, light green, adventuring green, and spring green, all in transparent. The opaques, I'm going to use olive, teal, mint, Oregon gray, olive I have a second container of. For the shells, I'm going to use sunset coral, that turns out a really pretty color, and uh, vanilla, French vanilla. Making these is a very different technique from making something like this. So mask on again, back to powder. And I'm gonna mix up pink, bronze, and vanilla. The French vanilla is typical slurry texture, but the light bronze is a little bit drier. And the pink is a little bit drier, but not quite as dry as the bronze. So to do the pink lipped shell, where it's a pretty solid, you're gonna take your popsicle stick with a slightly drier slurry and work it into that lip, little by little. And you're gonna pile it not too, too thick, but thick enough, and you want it to go anywhere that you want it to end up, a fairly solid pink. And then you're gonna go back over it with the French vanilla. So this one, I'll just do the lip. And 
and then I will add the slightly wetter and you really want to push it down into the crevices into all those little spaces and you're like doing a tap push motion and I often put too much and then I can scrape some off I'm gonna tap 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 get all the air bubbles out Use a paper piece of paper toweling. Get the extra moisture out. If you have a lot extra, scrape it off. Tap, 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 tap. So that's if you want a really solid, noticeable stripe of a darker color. With these that look much more variegated and much more like natural shells. You don't want to use the popsicle stick. You actually want to use your finger. So I will use this big one because it'll be easier to see. And I do tend to cut my nails pretty short for this. You're going to pick up some of the glass slurry and just rub it into the mold. And then you're going to get the slurry into these little details, but it's not going to cover the whole thing up. So you just work it in there. And depending on how variegated you want your shell to be, you can leave some of the clumps or you can work every single one of them out. So this one I was much more careful about getting it only into the creases. This one, I let it be a little more clumpy. Shells are all different, and I just want a slightly more natural look to the shells than if they're all one color. And once I've got that, and I can use just the uh, bronze, or if I wanted to, I could put a little touch of pink in my shell as well. Same technique, you're gonna grab some on your finger and work it into the spaces. And once you have the pattern that you like, then you go back with the French vanilla and fill in the rest. And you're gonna do it carefully because you don't want to knock or, or rub all of that highlighting out. So you're going to do it a little bit carefully when you spread it in because I want to keep that layer that's closest to the mold. I want to keep that intact. And then once I've got it full, same thing. Tap, tap, tap. Get the air bubbles out. This one is not really full enough. So after I've tapped, get the extra moisture out of it. Put a little more glass slurry in there. And again, tap, 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 get the air bubbles out. Get extra moisture off. extra slurry and these are ready for the freezer Some other things I use are things like, this was um, a plastic container that some erasers came in, and it has these beautiful indents. They're shaped like sea creatures. That's what the, eras the erasers were. It doesn't matter. I'll save it, use it to stir up the slurry, so that at the end, 
once I've gotten all the remnants that I can out of the container, I can just throw it away. It was going to go in the trash anyway, but I like to reuse it first. Another thing I save, if you have a Trader Joe's near you, the little green tea mints, um, my friends save these for me so that when I'm doing freeze and fuse, I make a bunch extra. You never know what you'll need. And I save them in these little jar, little containers. They're the perfect size. And then I'm not exactly sure how many I'm going to need for the frame. So I'm making up some today, but then I can also go back to these that I've made in the past if I need an extra piece. So reusing little things like this, I think these are the best little containers. Reusing these little plastic, using popsicle sticks, anything really inexpensive, recycled, repurposed is great when you're fusing glass. But I save, if it doesn't come out, I save all the little broken pieces because you just never know where you're going to need a little touch. I um, have a couple more shells I did. So I make quite a few extra. All different colors, all different shades. I've done them in transparent and an opaque. A couple of the fish. And as I said, it's a little bit tedious. You have to mix up the slurry the right way. Make sure you fill them properly. If you end up with an air bubble and don't mash it up and redo it, the air bubble will not heal. You can see there's a low spot in this one. There's a little divot. And that's because there was an air bubble and it was one of my early attempts. And I was hoping that going in the kiln would just fix it. It doesn't. If you pull it out of the freezer, and you see this when the tail popped off. If you pull it out of the freezer and unmold it and you realize that there's an air bubble in it, your best bet, let it dry, put the powder back in a container, mix it back up and try it again. Frustrating, but there's really no other way. There's really no, no other way to fix it. Now I have on a, a few of them, I have a couple fish where if the tail broke off, I have tried to go back and reattach it while I'm firing the piece. It usually doesn't work. When it's in the kiln, it tends to pull apart and you end up with a space in between. But what you can do is if you're using stringers for seaweed, you can lay the stringer, you glue it together and lay the stringer over it. And so when the stringer melts on top of the fish, you won't notice that the tail is broken. So if I do get it to that point, I will save those as well. It is tedious. There are a lot of steps, but you're not going to be able to cut anything out of glass that looks like this. And water jet cuts, which are the closest you're going to get to the outline, are very large. I've never seen anyone do water jets that are this tiny and this delicate. So really, if you want these little components, this is the way to do it. And this, now that I've done a whole bunch, there's not really enough glass in there to reclaim. And this whole container that I no longer need can go right in the trash, along with the popsicle sticks that have been contaminated with powder. So these are out of the freezer, and the very large pieces of seaweed all broke apart. I'll still be able to use them just fine. The shells came out fine. But the seaweed did not. I'm waiting for the freeze and fuse components. I'm going to start working on the, the frame. And I think I'm going to stick with one inch pieces.
and it's going to end up being framed for a four by six picture. So I'm going to make it five by seven. I should cut it for to get a wider piece of papyrus. It's going to end up a 4 by 5 not a 4 by 6 so I'll, I'll have to trim it and play, but mostly I just want to see if this will work. I want to see if putting the freeze and fuse components and the seaweed on the frame will be enough to hold it together so I don't have to do two layers. Next tray ready to be fired. Octopus did not survive. I think with very large pieces you have to do the freeze and fuse one at a time. Manipulating the mold to get the smaller pieces out was too much for that large piece. So we'll re-wet it and give them a second try. I didn't take it out. I'm just adding more water, waiting for it to thaw, and then tap, tap, tap just to get everything to settle again before popping it back in the freezer. need to take these downstairs and wash them. They turned out surprisingly well, considering I got busy and ended up leaving them in the kiln for 36 hours before I fired them. I won't be able to fire the finished piece until tomorrow because I have more freeze and fuse components in, but I'm gonna use a few of these extra pieces I just came up, that just came out of the kiln to finish up this section on the bottom. So right here and right here, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the seaweed, a little bit across the bottom, add another starfish, maybe pop in the little sand dollar. And then this will be ready to go in the kiln. Well, it'll be almost ready to go in the kiln. When I transfer from this shelf to the other shelf, I'm gonna cut some fiber paper so that it has the, the frame ends up with a little bit of a lip that I can put the pictures in from the back.
I have to wait for the freeze infused pieces to finish. So I'm going to prep the kiln shelf for this frame. And so carefully, hopefully without, whoops, that didn't work at all. I was going to carefully without breaking it, try to move this off this shelf. So I'm going to try to slide it off, reconstruct. I need this shelf to have a papyrus sheet on it. That way I don't end up with any texture in the frame. Come on frame, be cooperative. Obviously it is not gonna be cooperative. I can reconstruct it, no worries. Okay. Want the glass to overlap the thin fire in the center. I think my prototype is actually going to be more difficult than the actual frame will be. Trying to get everything so small so that it fits in my little kiln. I probably should just have gone ahead and done it in the big kiln. So as you can see, I would recommend doing this first and then just sweeping the extra pieces out of the way. Because gluing it down didn't really work all that well. Now I could have used the hairspray trick, probably should have used the hairspray trick where once you've got all the frit in place, you spritz it with cheap hairspray. But I have discovered with the current economy, cheap hairspray is no longer cheap. And the dollar store hairspray that I thought I was going to buy ended up costing more than the glass tack because my dollar store is no longer a dollar store. That's still the name, but the hairspray was $7 a bottle. So we can see that the it overlaps. So I'm gonna have a nice slot in there for the picture. It does not look straight, but I'm getting to the point where this prototype they end up in the trash. So let me put all the pieces that fell off back on and finish getting this ready for the kiln.
would like to put a sprinkling of clear powder over the whole thing. I don't know how that's going to work. Final step will be to get a really fine paintbrush, go around, or I may just leave it alone, fire it, and then do a little bit of cold work because where I put the powder, it might get a little bit, a little bit spiky, a little bit of residue. But I like to put clear powder because it seems to smooth everything out when I have all these tiny little pieces. My frame template is in the kiln. And I think the difficulties are going to be with the corners because I didn't assemble it correctly. And then when I put it back together, things didn't butt up properly. It's just a sample, so I'm not that worried about it. I may have to double the frame to get it to work and offset the joints. Certainly for the larger mirror, I'm going to have to double it. This will not be strong enough to support a larger mirror, but it's just a try. So let's pop it in the kiln and I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow. Overall, I love it. I'm still not 100% sure whether I have to do two layers. It does seem pretty substantial, but it's small, it's picture frame size. I may do another sample where I just fire a frame. We'll see. The areas that I thought would be a problem were up at the top corner. No, I'll just leave it down. Up at the top corner, because I shifted it so many times, the joint is very clear. It's closed, but it's just really clear, and there's a little space up there where it didn't close properly. The fish with the broken tail, laying the seaweed over it, hides the fact that it was broken. But the other fish, which I put on in one piece, separated. So I'm thinking this is probably going to go back in the kiln. I'm going to put a little more seaweed, cover that tail, put a little more frit. The bottom areas where there's a lot of freeze and fuse components came together beautifully and you can't tell where the joint is. Because I put the powder on the way I did it, you have a couple areas where I didn't wipe it off enough, so I'll just do a little quick sanding there. The channel on the back worked out great, except for the fact that I put it on crooked. So you can see there's a little section right there. The, the channel worked out great. I just need to be a little bit more careful about my assembly. Now I'm making the larger shells so that I can start preparing to make the mirror frame. 